Okay. So good morning, everybody. Today is the first the end of the main master class. Y'all did excellent. We really appreciate you. Those of you that are listening, I know we made some pre-arrangements. To get credit, you need to at least be here or, or watch the video. We'll have a minimum of how many absences you can have in the summer to do this, so you need to really be here. A um, couple of housekeeping matters. We're going to review as much as we can today. Your final was incorporated into your last MUS. Um, that's why it's a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the MUS. And then for those of you that are listening, we did have a drawing today on Bill Miller $15 gift card and a Nori one. It's good job. So, and again, Nori, we want to thank you because we know your husband's serving in Afghanistan and he's going to be gone for a while, so you can take the kids out and have a little supper. Don't have to cook. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so what we want to do, I want to talk about the, the must that we just had. you got to remember, you're going to have something that's simple like Q&A. You're going to have something that's simple like a jury charge. Lit, the, what we're doing here, you may have to do something for someone. They might hire you because there's a writer that wants you to write their book. Hey, it's money. Okay? You, you can do some of that now, actually. You might have to do something. You might have to incorporate a reading into something. So this was a little bit of a different type of, of uh, must. And I want everybody just to keep in mind, I want you to find good rules that are going to work for you. And by all means, let's, let's uh, discuss all theories, all whatever we have in mind. I really appreciate that because there's no way for you to know that there are different ways to do it. But you find what's best for you, okay? So, on this, <coughs> on this one, actually I wrote it and I was just doing a little bit of creativity. So, think into my mind. Okay? Oh, wow. And it's not exactly correct, but think into my mind. Oh, let me give you all your, your must. Okay. And everybody did an excellent job with what I gave you, so I do appreciate my kind work. And if you have yours printed, you can follow along. Okay? this as big as I can. So anyway, my it was one thing, let me pass out one more thing here. We did a little bit of, in these books that we talked about, some of you checked out some books. This is one in particular. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a book that some of y'all have because we have some assignments, but we also have tapes, CDs that you can listen to. And then Jeff brought it to my attention that even in here, there's some rules on commas and different things. So we did some excerpts, and you know we've got like several books. So those of you that have the books can look it up. But let's just follow along on some of these that we have. Let's talk about an exclamation. In court reporting, you learn that court reporters rarely use exclamations. But again, I'm talking about a different type of paperwork that you might have to end up writing. So on this handout. On page, um, on page 49, it says exclamation point, emphatic imperatives and sentences and or sentence fragments used to express strong feelings are ended with an exclamation point. So we know what an exclamation point is. Most court reporting jurisdictions do not allow exclamation points. They may be appropriate in some text entry assignments. So you won't put exclamation points in your transcripts when you have you're doing Q&A. But again, you're doing something different. You were hired to do something for a writer. You're going to do that. Now, <clears throat> when I dictated, <clears throat> I tried to be as emphatic as I could. And I said, congratulations, May Master students. Now, some of y'all had congratulations, exclamation, May Master students. That, that could work, too. You know, it's going to be your interpretation. But help me out here, guys. Let's see, let's see what we would have done. You have just experienced a small sample of the life of a court reporter. Did you feel that in the past three weeks? Because you were asked to do so much. That's the life of a court reporter. Yes. And you still have to find time to. And that was just three weeks. Okay. Um, Bill, Bill, come to my house because I don't. Want to yeah, you know, that's the thing. Wash, <laughs> wash probably hasn't been done. You probably, you know. Okay. So in just two weeks so far, and I was trying to do it the way I dictated it. So in just two weeks so far, comma, you've had to. I, I, I could have said, you have had to do the following. That would trigger you to do some bullets. Bullets are not something in court reporting either. But remember, we're doing something a little different if you were hired, OK? So you could have either, and I don't think anybody actually got this, and that's fine. Everybody put it in a sentence. But you, if you did it in sentence form, you would have to separate it by semicolons, 
okay? And, I, and your guys, again, I appreciate you letting me mark up your papers with all this red ink. And I'm marking it as I go along to compare you to what your, your comrades did, your cohorts did. I'm comparing it <clears throat> and I'm putting suggestions in there. That's not the final, but I'm putting it in there to bring it to your attention as we talk about it. So some of you are going to see a little um, something like a, a little this in there, like a, a dollar sign or a sign that says, I'm trying to make a little bullet anyway. But if you could have done the bullets, you could have put, you listen to some dictation and bring it down so you can make a transcription and then you work on finding, finalizing dictation by researching names. And here, some of you put work on finalizing dictation by researching the name, and they all put comma and brushing up on your English and grammar. I appreciate everybody got English correct, okay? Pa capitalizing it, capitalizing it. So here, you, you would have put a semicolon, because see, it's part of the same sentence. There's no way for you to know where I started and stopped. Again, juggled life in general as you try. See how many commas would be in here? Take some tests, comma, sat in the back of your, sat in your chairs and transcribed. And here's where it kind of got a little tricky, because then I started talking like I was talking to you. So, this is not exactly correct on, on bullet form, but that's how I would have done it as a writer, perhaps. So y'all paragraphed it, and that's absolutely fine. You paragraphed it. You even had a holiday in there where you probably spent some time practicing gotten discouraged because you know you want so bad to just be done with the school and you probably didn't get to watch any TV. Here's where there were a few changes. On TV you want to make sure it does it does not have periods. So make sure your global entry on your dictionary doesn't have periods. And of all weeks, comma. Okay, I've had a lot of um, probably 50% of the work that we've done in the past few weeks, there are concerns about whether you start a sentence with and and you can. Okay, you can. So I, we correct it on purpose. Again, do what's going to be best for you, but that, you know, on a test, it's going to be counted off because you've got to listen to that pause for that period. And you've got to have confidence that there's a pause there. You've got a period. So um, this one said, the way it was here, out of all weeks, this is when the San Francisco Spurs won the Western Championship. I didn't hear Western. Uh, and that's okay. So, uh, there were several that didn't, and that's fine. It, because it, it probably didn't say it. I have, uh, why I didn't bullet them like that mm -hmm. was because you start off within just two weeks so far, you have had to, then actually, if you're going to start with listen, then every other bullet should be a verb at the same tense. Listen, work, juggle. Mm -hmm. and I like see what you're saying, so they should have been all the past tense. Perfect. No, no, not past tense. Just if you're using a verb, keep the same tense. That should have been consistent. Listened, worked, Work. juggled. I get that. Okay. Okay. And Very then good. you get down to you even had a holiday. Well, that doesn't jive with your two. You've had to. You've gotten uh, discouraged. It didn't, you know. Right. So that's why I did not bullet them. I okay. thought about it very carefully, mm -hmm. uh, but that threw me off. So. No, and that's, and that's, you're exactly right. And you know what? Everybody put this in paragraph form, which would be correct on how it's written here. But my intentions, and had I worked on it more, you're right, I would have... I should have put them in, in same tense. And I think the only thing I try to do in dictating, and, and I really try this, guys. When I dictate for you, I, I think I said, congratulations, May Master students. You know, you heard my excitement. And then I said, in just two weeks so far, you have had two. I paused a little bit. Yes. Um, I was just asking a general question about bullets. If it's a, um, when you're doing it like that, even if it's a complete sentence, do not put punctuation in That the was one of my questions to find out. Do bullets, do bullets use periods? So get your globals out, get your Googles out. That's something that you want to find out. Do you put periods in bullets? Does anybody know? If they're complete sentences, you do. I mean, logically. That's right. I read right. about I that know. when I was doing this, and it said if it's not a complete sentence, you don't have to. Okay. Obviously, be consistent. Okay, good. Well, then we have your answer. So you did look it up. Yeah. If you do put it in. That's what it's saying to be consistent. Just to be consistent. You don't have to. Okay. Good. So if it's a complete sentence. And you know, you, what do you see when you do a resume, guys? When you do a resume and you have your bullets, sometimes you put periods, sometimes you don't. It just depends. Have you done a resume lately? You want to get your resumes ready when you still record recorder. Get that ready. Well, we won't need one. They're going to hire us. All You're exactly right. Somebody so so bad. You're exactly right. But if there's three of you applying for the same job, 
You always need a resume somehow. I tell you what, if you're going to work for the courthouse, you need a resume. So. Okay. Um, getting back. So thank you, Grant, for that. Putting in a, in, in good form there. Um, and then we talked about the ends. And how about here? But I'm sure nobody missed that news. Or did you? Did you hear when I said it? Do something with it. It's okay. You can put, but it doesn't, it wouldn't make it okay to have period and or did you. Agree? Oh, what about comma? No. You can put a comma. I just encourage the dash because it kind of rolled out how I was talking. Okay. Okay. Um, and then different things that we had here. During the past two weeks, check out more news events. This exercise, all I want you to do is I want you to, some of the things I'm going to ask you to do here, I want you to make a note of it, and you're going to be collecting your reference book somehow. So that way when you know, what do I do with books periods, or what do I do about exclamation points? What do you do about uh, quotes? Very, very important. A lot of different options. You're going to do a lot of quoting in court reporting. In court reporting. Um, and I also need you to um, open the UFM so everybody can find that. You're going to go to the Texas Court Reporters Certification Board. You can just Google Texas Court Reporters Certification Board. Just Google it. You should have this as one of your favorites on your uh, internet. You need to refer to that. We're going to start using the UFM as our format for your tests. And when you're taking the written CSR, a lot of you have already passed it, but when you take it, so many questions come from there. But I want you to open the, the UFM format manual. Number one, because you're aware of it. If you don't have it, you need to print it. And you need to keep it handy somewhere. Um, it'll tell you what to do when you have quotes. It'll tell you what to do when you're um, reading, when you're reading, rereading a question. And there's several options, but here, I'm going to give you all a moment to open that. What do you want us to open? The UFM, the Texas Court Reporter Certification Board. And if you go to the extreme, as you're looking at it, you go to the extreme right, you'll see some choices at the corner. And one of them is Uniform Format Manual. Everybody finding it? Is it still on the home page on the right-hand side at the top? Yeah. Uniform. Uniform Format Manual. Okay, but when there's, you open that, and then it gives you the um, examples. And the examples, you want to have the Format Manual, which gives you details of what to do, and then the example sheet. Find it? Where did you see that? On the right-hand side, at the very top. Right up here in the corner. Uniform Format Manual. Okay. Uniform Format Manual. Double-click on it, and you're going to see your choices. something like this is like, well, how do I do it if I'm quoting material? What do I do? Remember, there's court reporting English, there's English, there's something called APA. If you're doing some writing, it's, it's how do you do the formats? But on the uniform format manual, what are we supposed to be doing? How are we supposed to be doing a transcript? You're supposed to have a box, okay? You're supposed to have your page somewhere. You're supposed to have so many spaces over to indent. So that's why I want you to print it, because we want to work through that. So when you turn in a sheet for a test, especially when you're ready to take your, your CSR, you're going to have this, the format, OK? So that's just something, um, an added plus of a, 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 something that you can keep as a reference. 
So um, now that you have that open, I just wanted to show that to you. Let's go back to some of these here. Um, you got to say something, because when I was trying to dictate, I was dictating highlighted sentences of what the name of the program was. Like it was 2013 more tornado. What are you going to do with that? Just do something. You can put periods. You can uh, italicize it. You can you can do something with it. Can I see yours for a second? Can I see yours? Um, some other options. Some other options were, and, and then you you have to begin your quote somewhere. So I, I just started them there and ended them here. Okay, because remember it's not your words. Um, there is a rule in court reporting. When you have a lot of material that you're uh, quoting, you start your opening. You start your opening, and I was granted this, and I remember doing this also. But you start your opening here. You did it, quote, because he knows it's a quote. And then I started crossing it off, and I, and I saw what you did. I said that's exactly how you do it. But I couldn't find the rule to it, Grant. So. Every paragraph that you have, you have quotes. And you won't find this. A lot of reporters may not know about it. You won't find it. But I remember learning that. It, and so it's quote. And then the next sentence, the next paragraph is quote. And every paragraph that's part of a quote begins with the um, quotation mark. It's only when the quote is completely finished that you end your quotation mark. Which is what he did here. Yeah. See? So he had it here, and I started to say, no, I said, if you have it, because actually this whole thing was in one paragraph anyway, but he had put them in different paragraphs. It was too hard to read. Mm -hmm. So he put that, and that's exactly how you would do quotes. See all this material? And when you have 20 pages of quoted material, you have to figure out how to do it. Some, that's the, that's the proper way to do it in reporting. Why do you start, I mean, why wouldn't you just have it at the beginning and then just way at the end? Just, just to remind people that you're still quoting? I can't pinpoint the rule on it, but that's exactly no, what it is. No, it's just not the rule. Every, it's just, that's just the way it is. Every, every paragraph that you have in the saying, you put quotes, quotes, quotes. Well, here, and then you end it. Okay? And then I started a new one. Yeah, then he started a new one. Okay? And he did it any way you want, okay? Um... And then he kept going with that. So that wouldn't have been like, because to me, I thought that that was like a newspaper headline. So I had like capitalized. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. That's okay. Like, you know, yeah. capitalize it. That's okay. As long as you did something. Um, I wanted to show you another. So are you saying, but go back to that, please. To the uh, graphs. You quote, mm -hmm. you don't quote the title of the article and then go on to quote the. Yeah, yes. you, you open quotes. You would open quote it, which is what he did here. Open quote. So, but I guess that's because I had like looked. If I had looked at how to do quote the title by itself. Yeah, that's what I was doing. So I had looked that up, like how to do like a newspaper article title, and they had said to put it in quotes. Yep. Okay. Remember, court reporting rules, English rules. Take in as much as you can. There's no wrong or right answer. I'm just saying you're going to have to do something. And this thing about the quotes of the paragraphs, I'm telling you, you won't find a lot of reporting. You, you just won't because it's not a real common because it doesn't make sense. It's just mm -hmm. open the quotes and close them. But that's the proper way to do it. Um, okay, Maria, this was nice also. She, you just have to do something to show the event, okay? She put it in quotes here, but then Maria, I would have done it again because you're not quoting me. I'm quoting, I'm quote, I'm just reading something, okay? Um, so you have your quotes there and then you would end it. So just something that's going to trigger writing. Remember, not only are you court reporters, but you're writers. And then you close them there and see how she did it again? Mm -hmm. And she, you can do anything. You can, she italicized it. You can cap each um, word there. And this was how it was in the right in the article. Jury, jury deadlock in Jody area sentencing phase semicolon judge declares mistrial. And then you start with what they said, and you have to have quotes again. Um, Grant, the way Grant did it, he opened it. But you see the different, and all of y'all did something different, and that's fine. Just holding on that. Um, this on is a, yeah, either one. Mm -hmm. 
on the homonyms, like for peak, yeah, like what I do with my homonyms is I make them a conflict. So when they both come up, I select the one I want in the pair in the sentence. Well, how will that help you in real in close captioning? I'm not doing close captioning. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. no, no, but anyway, that's what I do. Okay, as long as you know the difference. Um, yeah, I know the difference. Yeah. Good. And eventually, clips a lot of times picks the right. Yeah, it picks the right one. Good. But I was just noticing that both of them had the the peak. The yeah. Peak, yeah. and I was like, I wonder. I just stuck it up. Yeah. You can make your hand uh, a card like this guy. I do for corporate party, some of them. I do all yeah, that. That's it's rule 104. There, there, there. It says what? <coughs> it's rule 104 about the paragraph. Four. Okay, Morrison's Guide for Court Reporting, Rule 104. Thank you very much. What does it say? It says use quotation marks at the beginning of every new paragraph of material that is continuously quoted. Awesome. At the conclusion of the entire passage, use the final quotation marks. There it is. And. That's what you did. What about the title? I'm just so. And this is the one that y'all studied. My first job was okay, good. in the newspaper. <laughs> so I learned a lot. That's where it was. So Morrison's rule 104. Not my book. It's called More Sun. I'm more risk sun. You're right. <laughs> and that's what you Whatever. But what is it? It's not the title. <laughs> the title you do. And titles. Um, Did it say? Uh, the title of the newspaper? Remember we did that last week and it said you can either italicize or underline. Because we, it's uh I think it was in that packet we sent out too. Either or. And that was uh, even a CSR question. What do you do when you can underline it? Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was either italicized or underlined. Newspapers. It said newspapers to underline when I looked it up, and then it's the articles you would. Okay, so remember when you're looking up, guys, when you're looking up your references, you want to start doing a favorite and, and stick by that. Like Morrison's is I was good. I also want you to um, Google. Uh, Al Purdue, O W L Purdue, O W L Purdue, and I'd like you to keep this as one of your favorites if you want. I'm just trying to help you out, Al Purdue. And do you see that it's uh, from Purdue University, and it's like a writing. So you you can ask those questions on it. Another one is uh, GrammarMonster.com. That one you can find a lot of explanations for it. Lay, lay, advise, advise. Okay. Any help with that, Maria? I, I want to say it was in that packet we, we handed out last week. It's quotation marks for your question mark, though. Uh huh. It's rule 115, 16, and then the no on the bottom. Okay, can you say it just a little, can you say it a little bit louder? Rule 115, it says use quotation marks to set up the titles and names of the following compositions. Articles, chapters, essays, poems, reports, short stories, and songs. Okay. Did titles you know that names of literary work and marketing units, that is, published titles that may consist of smaller units, should be italicized. Books, cartoons, magazines, newspapers, art, operas, periodicals, and plays. No, textbook writers do not always mention the use of uh, italics as used in Rule 115, which the computer now available, uh, I tell it should be used as noted above. Okay. So all, all this is doing, guys, is just <coughs> triggering your mind to do something. Okay? Let's see what a few more of the mistakes were, or what we can work together on this one. Thank you for that, guys. Uh, we already talked about the sequence. EF5, this is the proper way to do it. You can just Google it. And... Um, here it was more comma Oklahoma comma and adjacent areas. Uh, maybe or may not. I need those commas, but that's what they had. I'd like you to remember to look up cities when you don't know. It's not two words. It's one word. I think we have 50 percent that made it um, two words. Okay. Um, you want to figure out what you're going to do with your PM. Now you're going to see a lot of ways. You're going to see capital P, capital M, no periods. All you need to do is be consistent. We tested it last night, and I think when you do your machine. There's a way to do it with number bar and PM, and you're going to get this type of PM in there. So you want to find out something good for you. When I read it, you know, I was reading it, and I said CDT, I said, and I've changed it. I said Central Standard Time. But that actually means Central Daylight Time. But if I would have said Central Standard Time, you, can, you could have written it out. But this is how you, would, this is how you read it. You 
you'd read it. So what would you do? Write, write it out. Um, so write, it out. write it out. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be a, a, a on-the-job experience because if you have this throughout, uh, it could be good to shorten it. There's no way for you to know that you're supposed to just CST unless they say it. 17-mile um, path, we had another hyphen in there. And then here, some, some miss this comma right here because it's a series. See? It touched down, staying on the ground for so many minutes, and then it was crossing through a heavily populated section, so you'd have commas in there. Um, heavily populated, your LY words are not hyphenated. Just a little rule there. And um, plurals of tornadoes, we all know that, like tomatoes, tomatoes, tornadoes. Um, we talked about the peak. So is there another way that you can write your peak differently, like P-A-E-K yeah, yeah. and P long E-K? I just find it easier when I'm you write it real fast, I don't have time to think okay. which one is it, so I write them both the same. Okay. Um, another thing here on this 1999 bridge, creek, more tornado, the proper thing was bridge, creek, so the city was apparently bridge, creek, hyphen, more tornado. And um, I think we had some that, that missed that. But if you looked up Google 1999 bridge, creek, more tornado, you would see that exact um, way to write it. And then the last one here, Purpose built storms, did you get that? Mm -hmm. Purpose hyphen built storm shelters. Okay, very good. And then let's go to, I have a question on this one. This was the next title Jury Deadlock in Jody Area Sentencing Phase, Judge Declares Mistrial. What would you do here? Do you feel this is possessive? I couldn't find a good answer, but is it Jody Area's possessive? Shouldn't it have the comma up there as possessive? Yeah. What you think? The apostrophe? Mm -hmm. No. No. I don't think it's not really her sentencing. I mean, they're not saying her sentencing phase. They're saying it's the Jody area. Referring to her. I, yeah. I saw it. Like, referring to her. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't I don't know. I'm just throwing it out no, there. No, I'm just, I'm going to tell you that in headlines, uh -huh. in newspaper articles, they have to cut, they can't write, you know, complete sentences. Uh -huh. So they, they just condense it. Okay. And that's why, you know, there's no apostrophe necessary. Okay. Would, would, it, would anybody think it would have one if you were writing that? I would have thought so. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so then it would have been, well, her name ends with an S. But if it was like Martha's sentencing phase. If you, so if the you sentencing phase of Martha. Yeah. The sentencing phase of Martha. Uh -huh. so, so then you would, read, you would Or read if, it wrote, if it was written, Jerry is deadlocked in Jody Arias' sentencing yeah. phase. Just something There's to think a about. complete sentence. Something but to think this about. is a headline. So. Yeah, it's a headline. I guess so. Okay. So, and, and again, we talked last week, it would be the S apostrophe S, which is the most modern way we talked about it. You'll still see the old way. You have a question there, Miss? Miss? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that you're going to add something. You said what was <coughs> the S apostrophe S? Oh, yeah, we talked about that last week. Well, I saw the other thing, but I thought the other way was. Okay. I thought the other way was the other Yeah, way. I thought the other way you said S apostrophe it was S. No, the other that's way. That's the old way. Modern. That's up for discussion. So that's what we talked about. That's our discussion from last week. So again, you guys find something good that's going to work for you, whether you're going to do S apostrophe. I think it's S apostrophe, but you'll see that a lot of ways it's S apostrophe. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, this is the way it was written, guys, and that's the only reason why I did it here. But again, you can put everything in one paragraph. That's fine. Let's discuss this. Retrying. Uh, some of you, I started doing that, and then we started researching it. Can't really find it. All I want you to know is that on a lot of the rewords, a lot of them are re hyphen something, um, you know. For re discussion? <laughs> there's, there, there's. I don't know. I think, I, I, I think you need to adopt the rule and just stick to it mm -hmm. and always be consistent. So if you want to use the hyphen, that's great, but you need to do it everywhere. Consistency. And I think it was like for re elimination, it's like, it's when they're two, yeah, two for vowels. sure, there's two vowels together yeah. you gotta do But it. when you look it up in the dictionary, mm -hmm. it's, it comes up one word. One word. It's, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I did a spell check and mine didn't come okay. up. And, and just when you think about it, you see retrial all the time, it's, it's one word. So anyway, that was just up for discussion. I have a question. You know what happened in the Jody Arias case? Um, it was a three month long, however it was. And you know they had to have daily copy. In your UFM, there's a discussion on how you do your daily copy. So you're going to have your record and you have to put on there that it's not a final copy. You have to do so many things to it. Now, this person is going to get a transcript because it's a capital murder case, a guaranteed transcript. So for three months, that reporter is going to have her transcript to do, or his transcript to do. 
So they're going to take that data, copy, and you know, correct it, edit it, whatever. What do you think happens when the there is a mistrial in the penalty phase? There's two phases of a trial. What do you think happens if there's a mistrial in the penalty penalty phase? Do you think that is part of the record? Any 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 ideas? Say that again. In the penalty phase, there was a mistrial, so that court reporter was taking down everything for the mistrial. Do you think? that reporter has to make a transcript of the mistrial. They know, you know they have to make a transcript of the uh, of the guilty phase, you know, where it was. Imagine. Well, remember, if you're in court and you're taking everything and they find the defendant not guilty, it's wiped away. You don't make a record. And, and I'm, this is just food for thought. I, I, I'm just going to ask the reporters this question. This may be something you can bring up at convention. I'm saying, I'm saying I don't believe the penalty phase is going to have a record because it's wiped off. It's just like they didn't, they couldn't figure it out. It's a mistrial. Wouldn't they maybe have to go back and refer to it at some point? You know, that's well, a, I think for information purposes, one of the attorneys may want to request that, and, But that would be something that they would buy on the side, like yeah. they would buy your record. What did that expert say? Yeah. You know, that, that may happen. But as far as going up on appeal, that penalty phase wouldn't because it's wiped away. And so the new penalty phase will be the next one on appeal. You know, it is guaranteed appeal. Anyway, that was just a little question that we had, okay? Um, let's do this next one. Disaster declaration issuing in wake of flooding. Um, Mayor Julian, can y'all see that little tilde there? Just want you to know if there's ever a way that you have to do it, if you can find out how you're going to do it on your computer. You may not need it, but you might. You just, uh, just know that you have an option to do that. Bear County Judge, no commas are needed anywhere around here. And Wolf, you want to make sure you have correct spelling. It's not W-O-L-F-E. Okay. Seven day, we have the hyphen in there again. Declaration. Um, I thought seven day was seven the number. It's when because it's it refers a, to time. It's when it's um, age. It's a good question, Grant. We we went over that last week. Yeah, and I thought day is time. It's a good question. Um, I know we. And, and see, because there's so many guys, y'all have to help, okay? Yeah. So we had that reference last week, and I think um, Nori even printed something else for us that had the list of when you would write things out. A three-day trial? I mean, I, I like this. Because yeah, I, I think it has to do with age, miles per hour. Well, I've got it here, so. Okay. So, uh, guys, there's so much to do. It's just to help you trigger your brain and say, I need to figure that out, okay? But for this one, I think I marked it this way. Um, and then, some, some put a comma right here, would you? Would you? Um, not, not really, because it's just a continuation of everything. you got to remember your no. subject and verbs there, but anyway, some had a comma. No comprehensive damage estimate. We don't need a, a hyphen there because this is specifically an adjective to these two. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's not a comprehensive damage estimate. It's a damage estimate that is not complete. Um, sometimes city can be capped if you want, but be consistent. They're talking about the city of San Antonio. Sometimes you can cap it. 20 homes, 30. Three people died. Start at the beginning of a sentence. you got to have it um, written out. Okay, up for discussion. What about, so you're saying comprehensive damage estimate. Uh -huh. Isn't that to the estimate? No, because it, 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 that was a little tricky there, but it's a damage estimate that's not complete. So you wouldn't have it there. Okay. And on, on hyphens, it's, they're pretty, you, they're almost real blatant. <coughs> You're going to have commas to make sense, but this one, you, you don't need it there. What would you do, guys, if I'm dictating Governor Rick Perry? See how it's... It, Okay, what do the rules say? Um, on uh, page 49 of the handout, it just talks about abbreviations, but you see the word Mr., Senator, Doctor. When, and so you have to figure out what you're going to do. Because if I'm going to talk about the deposition on, sen on Governor Rick Perry, is that the proper way to title it? Isn't it the correct way when you do Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant? It's just food for thought, okay? What are you going to do, Doctor? So, um, just wrote that in there. And then the last one was federal relief. It could be capped. It's talking about federal, if you'd like. And then we're going to close out that one. <clears throat> then we have, I just threw this sentence in. 
really could you really couldn't tell it was I was reading something. I just threw that in because I think you went there, didn't you, Maria? Yeah, we did. <laughs> I like Taylor Swift. I like Taylor Swift. I don't like her. I like her, and I like Justin Bieber, but he's just oh my gosh, she's going off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> my oldest son music. loves Justin Bieber. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I like this. Oh no, I just I like, like their music. Bieber. Okay. And Britney Spears. So this is just a simple, simple statement, okay? Music artist Taylor Swift, how they concert, how see how I did that double, not correct English, but I threw it in there at the AT&T Center in San Antonio proper, right there. And then we're gonna go with this one. And guys, all I did was Google things, and I appreciate you not looking up the articles, but. Um, this was this was the way they wrote the article, "Dancing with the Stars." That's the name of a of the actual program. So everything's capped. You, there's no way you could have told you could have told by what I was dictating that there's a colon. So I should be, anyway, but look, crown exclamation again. Here, 50 percent had this um, a, a different way. It was J A M M E D. Yes, ma'am. The Dancing with the Stars is that not going? I tell. You could have. I saw yours, and that's okay too, because it's yeah, a. But so what's the rule? It is right. I thought it was. It is. Okay. Because so I had open quote and then the because I looked quote. it up and that's what it told me. The rule. <clears throat> okay. I had open quote, uh, single quote, dancing mm -hmm. with the stars, mm -hmm. close single quote, winner crowned. Okay. It's gonna make you work. So. Um, I was just so being you're consistent. consistent. Yeah. Yep, you were very consistent. And then, but here jam packed. Uh, um, fifty percent wrote J A M M E D hyphen packed, yeah. but the correct word is this jam packed. So if you have it in your dictionary that way, you want to correct it. Okay. It's one word in the dictionary. Which dictionary are you looking at? Webster. Mary Webster. Okay. It was one word, and I, I didn't see it one word. I saw it with a hyphen in places, but uh, but that whole sentence to me after a jam packed <clears throat> result show, what does that mean? I felt like there was a word missing there. After okay, so jam packed what? After a jam pack, it was a jam packed results show. It was After a result. After a jam packed, the, su the object, the subject is results show. The show was so jam packed with people. The show had so many people. Mary and Webster and Lenny showing you. It, it wasn't the introductory show. It was the Mary results Webster. show. Mary Look at this again, Maria, because Mary Webster online is showing hyphen. Just because I think I found it in several places, but um, and then the top of that dancer emerged at last. And then this person is saying, without further delay, you're dancing with the stars champion. Again, you better do something because it's a title of a show. That may be it, Maria. But that W is not capitalized because I looked it up and I'm looking at it right here. What W? With? Oh, with dancing with stars? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't okay. do it. On the original, on their own website? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because I had it all capped. I even had the cap. I was like, that doesn't look right. That looks bad. But you knew you had to do something with it. Yeah. So okay. You looked it up. Good. Um, Dancing with Stars Champion, and again, you know me, I would have done Champion, but y'all got me straight on that one last week. Remember everybody had meeting? No caps? Y'all <laughs> fixed me on that. <laughs> I left that alone. Uh, spring 2013, if it was just in the spring, it would not be capped. Here would be capped. Mm -hmm. Is Kelly Pickler. Remember the dictation? And that's where I put the exclamation point. And then this is, I was reading to you what I was reading, and in that, that's why you have a single quote. And if, when you have different people talking, you want to have a different paragraph for each one. If Kelly said something, if the uh, person in charge said something, if another person, you, you have a different paragraph for each speaker for sure, and you would close out their quotes for each speaker. This is going to be single quote because we opened them up here. Single quote. This is amazing. I want you to highlight something on this because this is a, a perfect CSR question. It was, if you, if you do have an exclamation, would it go there? It would because it's referring to this. This is amazing, single quote, Kelly said, comma, thrilled and hardly able to speak. That's not what she said. And then you got your close quotes. Hell, that close quote you have right there after speak, uh -huh. where's the beginning of that one? Right there. Oh, it's just the beginning of Yeah. The... I just happened. And then what Grant did, he would have done it for every paragraph. Double quote. He would have had a double quote here, single quote. you got to do something when you're reading from someone else's material to quote to show that it's not yours. And then we close it out. So great job and kudos to all of you for working on your very first Maymester. Court reporting department, this is a can be capped. Court reporting department. Um, your hard work will pay off. I don't know how I did that, but I mean you wouldn't you wouldn't find it necessary with the exclamation. A uh, little tip. Be sure to review the following message sent to you by Cheryl Mao and this. <coughs> well, you know what, this was just to get you to go to look at your email. You could have easily just cut and paste. 
okay? It's your, it's your work product. So cut and paste, and it's not always correct, but you can correct it as you want, okay? Like June 7th, comma, with a with either comma. Um, this might have been capped, whatever there. Um, and then week three, only because that's, that's what she titled it, so it's not week T-H-R-P-E. And then wiki, uh, be sure you're registered for summer school. This needs to be all together, Ihan. Again, here we don't have the periods necessarily. I think I, there was one there, but you can be consistent. And I think that was basically it. Look at this one right here on number seven. You may want to purchase, I think a couple of students did this, and I was thinking about it. I said, well, that makes a lot of sense. You may want to purchase a headset, comma, instead of using your earbuds, comma, to cut um, down on noise. You know, you want to use your headset to cut down on noise. It, it could go it either way. Hello, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. When you went to the uh, HTT colon backslash backslash, you said backslash, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, That's a front slash. Backslash. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I would have done it again. So I was like, she's telling us wrong. Is she trying to trick us? <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. So, okay. so this is called front That's slash? front slash. It's just slash. I, slash. I, 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 but you said backslash. Okay. Okay. And you know what? I probably wouldn't have made a backslash if I was typing yes, ma'am. Well, because in... Again, for the periods, it's like when I looked at her email, she didn't have any periods, uh -huh. and so do you or, or don't you? Be consistent. But just pick Just be consistent, yeah. Okay. And some people with semicolons or leave everything out. So, good thing for you to research and find out. I um, asked a court reporter about whether or not there's a record for the penalty phase of the trial, mm -hmm. and she says yes, yes, separate volume, but victim impact statements are not part of the record. Okay. Oh, wow. Interesting. Keep asking that question to several reporters. That was one reporter you asked? Uh, with, don't tell me who, but are they, do they work in a civil court or a criminal court? Criminal. Good. Okay? Keep researching. I want to know the answer. And I accept that. I just, I just wouldn't have. But anyway. Um, relax this weekend, guys. You don't have anything to do this weekend, right? Are you all caught up with all your work? Except maybe a few of you have to listen to videos. Uh, go reward yourself with something nice. And the only reason I, I did a dash there, you deserve it. You deserve it. I did a dash. Just make it for ease of reading, okay? So that was a different one. Again, it was longer because it was part of your final. Um, I'm trying to help. Do a little double there. Okay. We're working on what we're going to do for the summer. Did you want this back? Yeah, and I do want your, I do want it back. I will give these back to you eventually, but I do want them back. Let's take a five minute, guys. I need to uh, paper clip.